r slash ask reddit by reddit and chill older people of reddit what was the equivalent of teaching your grandparents to use the internet when you were growing up my father born 1922 told me his grandfather refused to believe in radios he figured someone was pulling his leg my grandma was born in 1925 she once told me that her fourth grade teacher told the class that in the future you'd be able to talk to a person across long distances while seeing them at the same time. My grandma vividly remembers thinking that it was the dumbest thing she'd ever heard. We speak through FaceTime regularly now. My great grandmother was born in 1900. She was in her late 90s when this happened. One day while visiting her in the nursing home. My mom asked me to call home to remind my dad to put dinner in the oven. My great grandmother saw me use my brick of a cell phone and wanted to know what it was. I explained and her face just lit up. So you could be grocery shopping and call home to ask your husband what he wants for dinner? She asked. She thought this was just fantastic. Then she asked if she could try. She called my great aunt. Her daughter. On my cell and regaled her about the marvels of modern technology. It was so cute. Great grandma was a month away from her 102nd birthday when she died. She lived long enough to cuddle my son. Her first great great grandchild. She was a cool lady. I miss her. My grandma is 86 and although she had a cell phone since the early 2000s. She never really used it and always used the landline. Last year. Her old cell phone died and we got her an iPhone thinking that it'll likely stay the drawer. Imagine our surprise when we started receiving group I messages from her with photos of her garden. She figured out how to do that all on her own. Even the speech to text function, she has Parkinson's and it really helps. So I showed her FaceTime and she was over the moon. Now it's video calls all the time. I never thought she would get to grips with that thing. But sure as hell am I glad she did. Debit cards. Like. How to actually pay by card and withdraw at an ATM. LOL. When my mother passed away in June 2018 I realized my dad had no idea how to use his debit cards because my mother handled everything like that. We had to go to an ATM to actually practice taking cash out. And then go into a shop to practice using the card to pay for things. He was totally blown away and after using contactless to pay for some newspapers exclaimed. My god. It's so easy. The shopkeeper could barely conceal her laugh. My lovely grandma used her microwave for one thing only. Heating water. It was adorable. She also only used email once. Her message to me. Your dad made me do this. I'll never be the same again. Love. Grandma. Haha <laughs> that's a funny sense of humor though. Sounds like the kind of jokes we make now. Here's a really old one. My dad. Who would be 102 if he were still alive? Grew up on a farm. When his dad got their first tractor he couldn't figure out the manual shifter so he would make my dad sit on his knee and shift gears for him while he drove. Family legend has it that my farmer granddad, still with us, in his 90s now, tried to stop his first tractor by shouting whoa at it. Like he would with his draft horse. The tractor. Obviously. Ignored him entirely. And granddad and the machine ended up in the canal. VCRs. They were all slightly different and getting them to record TV programs at specific times was somehow guaranteed to fail. And if it went awry you could be pretty sure that episode of the X-Files or whatever would not be broadcast again for a year or two. My mom was as tech illiterate as they come. But when she went back to work full time in the early 80s. There was no way she was going to miss days of our lives. I had just moved out. So she read that poorly translated manual over and over and ran test recordings. And after that. Never missed a day of days. I'm still proud of her. Edited to add. My mom went on to surprise us all a few years ago. And at about age 70 when she got her ham radio license. It wasn't out of the blue. Her second husband, she remarried in her 40s, does things like that because he is a master falconer. She is not the person that I knew in the 1970s growing up and that's awesome. My grandmother, born 1888 never learned to drive and always referred to my grandfather's car as a machine. 
My grandmother is 89 and she's talked about how her mother, my great grandmother, learned to drive and went and got her driver's license. The next day my great grandfather went and bought a new car and she never drove again as she was afraid to wreck the new car. What amazes me the most about that story is that as I understand it. He went out and bought the new car without even mentioning it to her. I think the transition is that I, 60ish, have noticed is that I expect technology to change. I expect an iPhone with new features. I am bummed about the lack of jetpacks. But otherwise technology keeps delivering wonder. But without a manual so you have to figure each device out. My parents didn't expect the changes. They had trouble adapting. The pace of change has accelerated. Three of my grandparents were born before the first airplane flight and three of them watched men walk on the moon. I see a new car feature and beach about its imperfections. I so wish that this had more upvotes. I, 23, have this conversation with my grandmother, 70s, all the time. Being born in the 90s meant that as I was growing up technology was advancing so rapidly but also with less physical changes. It's all slightly upgraded versions of the same stuff. As she was growing up and in the workforce there was time leading up to the new items and not everyone had access to them instantly. It was a choice to upgrade and learn the new tech not necessarily an absolute necessity for her. That said. She's a smart lady and when I push her to learn something she does. She's my favorite person to text when she's not sending me articles about crimes in Nick and berating my parents for allowing me to live alone in such a dangerous place. I'm not that old. But was raised by my great grandparents. When my great grandfather passed away it came to light that my great grandmother did not and still to this day does not know how to pump gas. She refuses to learn. When my dad was dying he took my mom out to learn how to pump gas. This was in 2007. My mom was in her 60s and it had always been my dad's job to take care of that. My dad tried to turn my CDs over like records in the early 90s. One of my uncles used to rewind both sides of music cassettes after listening to them. Edit. Thank you for the silver. According to my nan. It was teaching my great great grandmother how to use a toaster that you don't need to turn the bread in. My grandparents still had toasting forks. It was fun to use as a kid. My grandparents received an email from a Nigerian prince and they had heard this was a scam. They called me terrified that they had been hacked and that he'd stolen their money. I asked them if they downloaded anything. Responded to him at all. Or sent him anything. They said no. I explained that they were fine and to just delete the email. They printed it out and went to every bank they did business with to make sure he hadn't taken their money. I feel so bad for all those bankers. What an awkward conversation. MR Banker. I want to make sure Prince Wazoo has not taken any money from my account. At least that's better than being scammed. When my great grandmother first had electricity and installed in her house. She was given an electric clothes iron. After ironing. She would insist on leaving it plugged in and placed on a high shelf so the leftover electricity would drain back out. Apparently it took a long time to convince her that electricity did not work like water. This reminded me that my grandma who was in her 90s and had email. Thought that the email was delivered to her inbox by people. My mom would tell her she sent her something and my grandma would say well. They probably haven't delivered it yet when most likely it was in spam. So cute. I miss her. She's also the one that told me in her 80s that she still feels the same as she did when she was 18. She meant in her head. Not physically. She's right. You do feel the same. When I was around 12 my parents got my grandparents a cassette player. This was not new technology by any means. But my nana and granddad had only ever listened to the radio or records. So it was new to them. My parents gave them some tapes to listen to, I think I may even have made them a mixtape of some of their old favorites. But when they first plugged the cassette player in my grandparents just turned it on. Pressed play, with no tape inside, and watched the little wheels turn. It was like magic to them. They were so delighted by the whole thing. Or, oh, that's actually really cute. Though, the wonders of modern technology. Bringing you the electric motor trademark sign. The microwave. 
There was a while there old people thought it was a high tech magic box that if you press the he wrong buttons could alter space time forever and blow up the universe. I have a friend whose parents are in their early 60s and they refuse to get a microwave because they think it will give them cancer because radiation. Plugging in the three cords in the back of the TV. Red. Yellow. White. Right. Taping the bit of cardboard over the remote so that only the power. Channel. And volume buttons are showing. This would have been a life changer if I knew it. A record player. They have three speeds. 33 revolutions per minute for LPs. 45 revolutions per minute for singles and 78 revolutions per minute for the old Timmy records. My grandparents had theirs set to 33. I was messing around with it and left it at 45. They called my parents ranting that I broken it. I told them how to fix by just moving the control that highly visible at the front. The next time I visited they accused me again of breaking it. I had to change the setting and was told never to touch it again. The irony was completely lost on them. Well it was working fine before you touched it is a favorite for people. I remember systematically having to uninstall toolbars and other bullshit that my grandma installed on her computer after using it once. Literally only used IE to download another browser which I immediately hid so it couldn't be ducked up, while being berated because I clearly downloaded all the viruses and am the sole cause for it going so slow. I was like 7. Ended up being a you can't use the computer without supervision situation until my grandma once again downloaded trash until it went into that restart cycle. Not entirely true. The virus was probably already on it when I was just uninstalling the bloat, and she couldn't blame me for it. Didn't get an apology. But did have those restrictions lifted. <laughs> Convincing a grandparent that he was not going to be able to replace his manual shift car with a newer car that was going to have the shift lever on the steering column like he was used to. Edit. Some of the comments indicate people are confused. I am not talking about the automatic transmission lever on the steering column. That was there because the manual shift was on the column before automatic transmissions were a thing. Standard H pattern manual stick shift but located on the steering column. Not on the floor. You need to step on the clutch with your left foot to shift the gears. It was called 3 on the tree. Still confused. Column shift 55 Ford. AWW man. My first car had column shift. And it was a boat. A little off topic. My high school got computers my senior year. Admin hunted for a teacher who had a free period so they could teach computer class. One of my favorite school memories is the football coach standing at the front of the room offering extra credits to whoever could figure out how to turn the computer on. That right there needs to be in a movie. Would sure define the era. Childproof caps on medication in the early 70s. None of the adults could figure that shit out. So they'd hand their, their bottles of meds to the kids for us to open. Everyone thought it was funny as hell. Equals 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 equals. Edit. Grammatical correction of there to there. Jesus. I need to quit drinking so much ducking cough syrup. Did childproof caps work differently back then than they do now? Teaching my parents how to hook up the Atari to the TV. My dad could hook up a VCR and use it. My mom couldn't. But neither could do the Atari. Plus, I was also small enough to fit behind the TV without them needing move anything. Wait. It's not an Atari mom. It's an Xbox. Programming the VCR. No no no. I like the flashing 12 o'clock. My mom. A genealogist was 50 when she got her first computer. I was her tech support for the next 32 years. Most of it was remote. Trying to explain how to use email was sheer torture, but who picks up all these messages and delivers them? My brother bought her a cell phone but didn't bother to program it for her so she mailed it to me to fix it. Eventually I printed, laminated and taped her password and all the phone numbers to the back of her phone. We mailed that phone back and forth for a month before she felt comfortable using it. God I miss her. My grandma simply didn't get that email and regular address were different things. I told her she could contact me fast via email by talking to one of her other grandkids and having them send me email. But then she scratched out my physical address in her a disc book. 
not a technology example. Late in life my mother started exercising. She asked me to show her how to do a jumping jack. She didn't understand it was one continuous motion. Born in 1926. She never had pay classes. I'm 27 but my mom's favorite story about technology from her time was trying to introduce her grandmother to TVs. She had refused to buy one since the day they came out because she didn't understand them and it scared her. When she got too old to live on her own. She had to move in with her daughter and granddaughters, my grandparents and mom aunt's house, and it was the 1970s so they obviously had TVs. She was basically immobile and sat in her favorite chair all day in a slip nightgown kind of dress. They had to turn her chair around if they wanted to watch TV and she wasn't decent for company because she was 100% convinced that the people could see her. She thought that like. As they were watching the Brady Bunch on TV. They were doing the same thing but watching my mom's family. She was Irish Catholic so modesty was a huge deal for her and she'd complain the whole time the TV was on about how uncouth it is for the young men and husbands in these TV shows to be watching ladies wearing bedclothes in their own homes. The only way she would watch TV with everyone was if someone helped her into a Sunday dress and did her hair and makeup. And then she'd sit there poised in the chair like she was on a talk show smiling and occasionally waving at the people on TV. Edit because a lot of people are getting confused. This was my great grandmother who was born in 1896 and this took place in the 1970s when she was in her 80s. It did not happen recently so you can stop calling my great grandmother dumb from not understanding how a TV works. This is really fascinating. Ducking like and subscribe.